in the remote islands of Patagonia, where cold Pacific winds sweep over grey seas and the mountains plunge into a maze of fjords, there once lived a woman who carried within her the oldest voice of the southern world. Her bones were found on the Strait of Magellan, buried beneath a shell midden in a site at the southern tip of Chile, called Punta Santa Ana. She lived about 7,000 years ago, when the sea was already the centre of life for her people. Today, she is known simply as the Punta Santa Ana woman, the earliest known inhabitant of this region and the matriarchal ancestor of a lineage that would endure for millennia. Her DNA, labelled as PSA1 in genetic literature, revealed a faint but unmistakable echo from another world. About 3% of her genome traced back to Australasian ancestry, the same genetic signal found later in a man from Cueva Ayayema and in the canoe-faring peoples of Patagonia who followed her. That small trace of ancestry links her to the distant islands of Southeast Asia and Oceania, to peoples who once shared the same ancestral population thousands of years before any human set foot in South America. The Punta Santa Ana woman represents the beginning of the Patagonian story. Her presence shows that by 7,000 years ago, humans were already fully adapted to a maritime way of life at the end of the world. Her descendants built canoes, hunted sea lions, and gathered shellfish along the rocky shores, living off the sea as generations before and after her had done. Through her, we glimpse the continuity of a people who never lost their bond with the ocean. Thousands of years later, and some 300 kilometres away, another individual would be discovered whose genome echoed hers, a man from Cueva Ayayema, on the extremely remote and rugged Isla Madre de Dios. He lived about 4,500 years ago, two and a half millennia after the Punta Santa Ana woman had died, yet his DNA carried the same ancestral threads. Together, these two individuals tell a single story that stretches across deep time, a lineage that remained isolated at the far southern edge of the world, preserving the earliest genetic heritage of South America. The site of Cueva Ayayema lies in one of the most remote corners of the Magallanes region of Chilean Patagonia. Within its limestone chamber, archaeologists uncovered the incomplete but well-preserved bones of the man now known as Ayayema. His discovery would later reshape our understanding of how the Americas were peopled. When his genome was sequenced, it became clear that his ancestry was not typical of later Native American populations, which show strong ties to Mesoamerican groups. Instead, Ayayema shared his closest affinities with the much older population of Lagoa Santa in eastern Brazil, dated to around 10,000 years ago. Radiocarbon dating placed the Ayayema man between 5,308 and 4,933 years before present. He was a robust adult between 35 and 50 years old, a hunter and gatherer who lived by the sea. His bones bear the marks of a life spent navigating the cold waters, hauling nets and harvesting shellfish. The world he inhabited was a harsh one, a labyrinth of islands, storms and tides, yet it was already home to communities who had mastered it. They carved canoes from logs, made tools from bone and stone, and lived among sea lions, penguins and whales. The genome of the Ayayema man confirmed what the Punta Santa Ana woman's DNA had first suggested. The people of southern Patagonia carried a deep and ancient ancestry that linked them not to the later agricultural civilizations of the Andes or Mesoamerica, but to an earlier wave of settlers who had spread into South America long before. This ancestry, shared with the Lagoa Santa people of Brazil, bore traces of something unexpected, a connection to the peoples of Australasia. When geneticists compared the Punta Santa Ana and Ayayema genomes with those of other ancient and modern populations, they found that both carried about 2-3% to Australasian ancestry, the same subtle genetic signature seen in some Amazonian groups like the Surui and Caritiana. This ancestry connects them distantly to the indigenous peoples of New Guinea and the Andaman Islands, revealing that their ancestors had roots in a population that once lived in Southeast Asia or along the Pacific Rim. The Australasian signal, faint but consistent, transformed the understanding of how the Americas were settled. It showed that the first humans to reach South America were not a single, homogeneous group, but part of a complex web of lineages. Some had already mixed with populations carrying Denisovan ancestry in Asia before crossing into the New World, 
These early settlers likely followed a coastal route, moving along the Pacific shoreline, living from the sea as they travelled. The Punta Santa Ana woman's people belonged to this first wave. They may have followed the same ecological pathway, the so-called Kelp Highway, that stretched from Alaska to Patagonia, offering a continuous corridor of marine life and resources. Their descendants remained isolated in the southern fjords, shielded by geography and climate from the later population waves that swept through the continent. By the time of Ayayema, that isolation had preserved their ancient genetic heritage. His genome, like hers, showed no sign of the later Mesoamerican-related ancestry that became widespread after about 5,000 years ago. Instead, both individuals clustered together genetically with the Lagoa Santa population of eastern Brazil, showing that the earliest South American settlers had once formed a broad, continent-wide network before becoming fragmented and isolated. Alongside the Australasian signal, both the Punta Santa Ana woman and the Ayayema man carried elevated levels of Denisovan-related DNA, genetic traces from a sister lineage of Neanderthals that once lived across Asia. This Denisovan connection, strongest today in Papuans and Aboriginal Australians, supports the idea that their ancestors came from a population already admixed with Denisovans before entering the Americas. The combination of Australasian and Denisovan ancestry is a signature of deep prehistory. It hints that the earliest South Americans may have descended from an island or coastal population in Southeast Asia, one that had moved northward into Beringia and then south along the Pacific coast. When that population reached the end of the continent, in the wind-swept channels of Patagonia, their descendants continued to live much as their ancestors had, navigating waters, harvesting shellfish and building fires in caves by the sea. Over the next several millennia, their lineage persisted. Two later individuals known as Ancient Kaweskar, two and three, dated to between 2,000 and 1,500 years before present, show that the genetic signature first carried by the Punta Santa Ana woman still endured. Both of these later people retained between 3.5 and 3.7% Australasian ancestry, nearly identical to hers. This remarkable stability over thousands of years implies not replacement, but continuity. The people of the southern fjords, descendants of that ancient coastal migration, remained genetically and culturally stable for millennia. Even farther south, in Tierra del Fuego, the ancient Yamana or Yagan culture carried this legacy to the edge of the inhabitable world. One Yamana individual, about 1,200 years old, shows the highest Australasian ancestry of all, an extraordinary 5.5%, while another, about 800 years old, still retains roughly 4%. These Fuegian peoples, living among glaciers and icy channels, were the last inheritors of the ancestry that had first entered South America with the Punta Santa Ana woman's forebears. Taken together, these six Patagonian genomes, the Punta Santa Ana woman, Ayayema, the two ancient Kaweska, and the two ancient Yamana, form a genetic time series spanning more than 6,000 years. Across all of them, the Australasian and Denisovan signals remain consistent, faint, but unmistakable. They mark the persistence of a lineage that began with the woman buried on the Strait of Magellan, the first to leave her trace in the soil of Patagonia. The woman known as the Punta Santa Ana woman lived at the southern tip of South America, in the channels of what is now Chilean Patagonia. Her remains were found near the Strait of Magellan, a region that would later become the heartland of the seafaring Yamana, or Yagan, people. Though separated by millennia, she stands as a probable ancestor of these maritime hunter-gatherers who mastered the sub-Antarctic waters long before Europeans imagined a route around Cape Horn. Archaeological and genetic studies show that she lived during a period when the last glaciers were retreating and the sea was rising to form the intricate network of fjords and islands that define southern Patagonia today. Her world was a mosaic of icy channels, dense forests and abundant marine life seals, sea lions, shellfish, and seabirds. She would have travelled along these coasts by canoe, perhaps one made from bark or hollowed trunks, similar to those later used by the Yamana. These canoes were the beating heart of a nomadic existence, carrying entire families, dogs and fires, burning in clay hearths from island to island. 
She likely grew up in such a world, one where the horizon was always water and the people were shaped by its rhythm. The Yamana who came thousands of years after her inherited that same resilience. They too lived by the sea, naked but smeared with seal fat against the cold, lighting fires even in their canoes, speaking a language that mirrored the intricacy of their environment. They called themselves Yamana, meaning simply human beings. Their daily life was much as their ancestors might have been, gathering mussels, hunting sea lions, and watching the tides and weather with intimate precision. Her descendants carried forward a deep knowledge of the ocean, how to read wind patterns, the habits of fish, the cycles of shellfish beds. To survive in such a merciless climate required intelligence, cooperation, and creativity. These qualities would have defined her people. In this sense, she was not a remote fossil, but an ancestor in the truest sense, a mother figure standing at the beginning of the Fuegian lineage. The Yamana, the Kaweska, and other canoe peoples of the far south all bear traces of her world. Through them, her story continued into modern times, whispering through the last speakers of the Yamana language, through the rhythm of paddles slicing cold water, and through the bones that once moved with the tides of the world's edge. The Australasian ancestry found in her and her descendants does not mean that people from Australia or New Guinea literally crossed the Pacific to South America. Instead, it points to a shared ancestry with a now-extinct population that geneticists call Ghost, the unsampled population A. This mysterious group likely lived somewhere in East or Southeast Asia during the late Pleistocene and was distantly related to the ancestors of Papuans and Andaman Islanders. When humans carrying this ghost ancestry migrated northward into Beringia, some of their descendants entered the Americas and travelled south along the coast. Most of the northern populations later lost this signal through admixture, but in the far south, in the isolation of Patagonia, it survived. The Punta Santa Ana woman's genome and those who followed her preserved that ancient link, making her a genetic time capsule of the earliest peopling of the Americas. The significance of her DNA extends far beyond Chilean Patagonia. It forces a re-evaluation of how humans spread across the New World. The traditional model, a single migration from Siberia that populated both continents, can no longer explain the evidence. Instead, the genomes of the Punta Santa Ana woman and her descendants show that multiple waves of people entered the Americas, some carrying genetic legacies that reached back to Southeast Asia and the Pacific. The study that revealed her genome concluded that early human dispersal within the Americas was rapid and dynamic, with multiple independent migrations creating a patchwork of ancestries. The persistence of the Australasian signal in Patagonia and the Amazon suggests that this first wave of settlers diversified quickly after arrival. In most regions, they were later replaced or blended with northern-derived populations. But in the southern fjords, their genetic story endured. Beyond its scientific implications, the story of the Punta Santa Ana woman gives a human face to this deep history – her bones, resting beneath layers of shell and ash, speak of a life lived by the sea. She gathered mussels, kindled fires, and looked out over the endless grey horizon. Her descendants, like Ayayema, inherited her world and her genes, the same faint Australasian and Denisovan signatures that tell of a journey beginning in the islands of Asia and ending at the tip of South America. In her genome lies a record of movement and survival that spans half the planet. It connects the frozen fjords of Patagonia to tropical coasts long vanished beneath the waves. It shows that even in the most distant corners of the earth, the human story was never isolated, but interwoven. A network of migrations, encounters and enduring lineages. The Punta Santa Ana woman stands as the first known voice of that southern lineage. Through her, the people of Patagonia can trace their ancestry to the earliest wanderers of the Americas and beyond, to an ancient population that once walked the shores of Asia and crossed the Pacific by way of a long, forgotten route. In the silence of the Strait of Magellan, surrounded by wind and waves, her story continues. Her bones may be 7,000 years old, but her legacy endures, carried in the DNA of the Ayayama man, the Kaweskar canoe builders and the Yamana navigators who followed her path. 
Through them, the first woman of Patagonia still speaks, her ancient genes whispering across time, telling us that the story of humanity was never simple, and that even at the end of the world, the echoes of our sh-